Hey guys, welcome back. One of the things that I get asked a lot with testing all of these different products is, does applying extra layers equal extra longevity? Well, your boy Scott here is gonna put some of those to rest. Will twice the layers mean twice the protection? Three layers, five layers? Or will it actually make things worse or no difference at all? It seems like most of the modern coatings released in the last year or two don't even require two layers. They just simply instruct on the packaging to install one layer. There are of course exceptions to this. Companies like Ceramic Pro, which is a professional only product, has up to 11 layers of their coating. IGL has two, Glosset has two or three, and so on. And there is a store-bought product, Griot's 3-in-1, that states you can add a second layer, but it's not required. Most everything else says one layer is enough, and then they'll state the longevity six months, a year, what have you. So thanks to a subscriber for suggesting this video and I'm going to embark on another long-term longevity test to see how seven of these products perform in my usual style of testing, albeit with one, two, three, or five layers. All seven of these products have shown to be strong performers in the past and in current tests, so that's why I chose them to test here. We know they perform, so let's see if multiple layers will make them perform better. I went to my local junkyard to find some hoods and it's actually a lot harder than you would think here in Texas because of the sun fade and the damaged clear coats that so many of these darker colored cars have, along with many of the lighter colored cars here, which are quite prevalent, of course, because of the heat. I learned my lesson in the past, knowing that the lighter colors don't show up well on camera for you. So I found a color that may work, and this color is called Sunset Orange Metallic off of a Nissan Murano SUV. It was also very common on the 350Z of the era. So let's get to work prepping it. You can see that this hood is full of a lot of swirls and deep imperfections. We're not going for concourse level quality here, but I'll get it looking nice with an ideal surface for these products to bond to. I'm always getting comments about what watch I'm wearing in my video, none of which are very expensive, but every single one means something to me. This is a $150 Forge and Foster London watch that my wife gave me for Father's Day. It's a Chinese automatic movement, but I absolutely love it. I did a decontamination wash, not shown here. Then of course I clay barred it. And then using my trusty old cheap Harbor Freight polisher, I used a Eurofiber microfiber pad along with Shine Supply Chop Top, which is a diminishing abrasive to get a lot of the defects out. When I do all these prep videos, I like to use different products so you can see that you can still achieve the end result with various different products. You can see here I'm using a product called a Tornador to help blow out the pad. And of course my Bernadoodle Lulu, she likes to, <laughs> she likes the air in her mouth from the compressor and I try not to do that because it's probably not good for her. And for finishing, we're gonna use Oberk Polish, which is their number two step for two-step polishing and a Rupes yellow pad. We will of course wipe it down with 35% isopropyl alcohol and distilled water to make sure we have a bare surface before we tape everything off. And here's our final product, all polished, looks much better. Still a few little imperfections in it, but overall much better than it arrived here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just tape everything off into squares. We're gonna do seven products and four different sections for layers, one, two, three, and five layers. And of course, we will have proper labeling for everything using my graph tech and go through the process of making them, getting them on the hood.
Why did I choose these seven products? Other than the fact that they have proven to be pretty strong performers in current and past tests, I have a mixture of coatings, being traditional coatings like Avalon King or Nanobond, aerosol sprays like Meguiar's hybrid paint coating, and then of course, graphene spray coatings, standard spray coatings, SiO2 spray coatings. And then just for good measure, we have Fuso, Soft 99 Fuso, the PTFE version, which is the more or less Teflon, just to see that's that's more of a traditional wax, but it is it has proven to be a very strong performer. So we're gonna see if multiple layers of that is gonna change anything too. And except for Fuso, the applicators we'll be using are auto fiber saver applicators, red and gray. Shop temperature is 69 degrees or 20 and a half degrees Celsius with 58% relative humidity. First up is Soft 99 Fuso. Directions are apply, wait 15 minutes for it to, com to completely dry and then remove it. I did find that as the layers got higher, it became increasingly more difficult to remove. You had to use a lot of pressure. And just to clarify, we are waiting one hour between each layer. Griot's 3-in-1 says wait 12 to 24 hours, but we're only going to wait one hour between layers. New finish graphene, I found it very easy to apply, remove in all cases for all layers. But it's apply, wipe it off. That's it. Very simple. Sonex Ceramic Spray, apply, wipe off. Very simple to use. Again, no issues there. Avalon King Armor Shield, apply, wait two minutes, wipe it off, and that's easy. As the layers got thicker, it did seem slightly more difficult to remove, uh, tacky, if you will, especially towards the fourth and fifth layers. Meguiar's hybrid paint coating, you spray it on the applicator for three seconds, you apply it, wait one minute, and then you wipe it off. Very, very easy product to use. As it got towards the fourth and fifth layer, it did seem a little bit more difficult to remove, but it was still very easy to remove.
and Nano Bond, aka Nano Age 9H. Apply, wait two minutes, wipe off. Same with some of the others, once you got beyond two layers, it seemed like it got increasingly more difficult or tacky to remove over that two minutes, or once that two minutes was up, and especially the fourth and fifth layers. And Griot's 3-in-1 seems to be very easy to apply, very easy to remove. Again, on the 4th and 5th layers, it does seem to be a little more grabby. Other than that, pretty easy to use. Everything is now installed. Get out my alchometer paint thickness gauge. Once again, let's see if anything has picked up thickness. This gauge doesn't pick up very fine increments of increase. So I really don't see any increase in thickness and none was really expected, but five layers, you know, maybe there was something, but it definitely doesn't look like it. So there's your final product going to remove all of the tape and let it sit and cure here in my shop for the next week and a half. We will do a first rinse followed by a first wash soon after first of the month. This test will start the 1st of May 2022. And finally if you guys have used any of these let me know in the comments how they've held up for you especially if you've applied more than one layer. Really curious to see what your longevity has been like. So again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon if you want to see notifications. If you're having problems where it's not letting you do that, all you have to do is unsubscribe to the channel and resubscribe. That's how it resolves that issue. And of course, like the video, comment down below. And if you would like to support the channel, ways to do so are on your screen here. Keeps everything completely unsponsored and free of any outside influence. Thanks again for watching and we will see you soon.